Greetings, my name is Andrew Duthie, and welcome to another how-to video. This one on, dude, where's my JavaScript? Before we jump into the content, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the OutSystems YouTube channel. There you'll find a number of playlists, including one from our advocacy team, which includes this and many other how-to videos. A quick note on security. In this demonstration, for the purposes of keeping the demo simple, I'm passing user input directly into my scripts. In a real application, you should never, ever trust user input, whether that's coming from a text box, as in the examples here, or from a database, for example, and you should always encode user input before using it in any way. In this session, what I'm going to cover is a common question with the OutSystems platform, that is, where can I add custom JavaScript into my web application. So I'll show you three areas of an OutSystems application where you can add and customize JavaScript for your application. I'll show you where to find that JavaScript at runtime should you need to troubleshoot or debug your JavaScript code. And I'll also show you some tips on how you can structure your JavaScript to minimize the possibility of namespace collisions and problems later on. Here you can see an application I've built with some very simple JavaScript functionality. I have a simple accordion UI where I have a link in the module JavaScript that allows me to pop up a dialog that shows me what the name of the application is that I'm running. That's actually coming from the server side, and I'll show you how we do that. I also have some JavaScript at the screen level that allows me to do a simple Hello World style interaction, again, using a standard JavaScript alert box. Lastly, I have a web block or a widget which has similar functionality. So we can see this is coming from the web block. So let's take a look at how this is implemented. Here in Service Studio, you can see in the center canvas area the accordion control which I'm using for my primary UI. To supply the JavaScript at the module level, I simply selected the module in the tree to the right, and one of its properties is JavaScript. If I double click here, you can see the JavaScript code that I've added to my project. Now here's where I talked about some tips in terms of properly structuring your JavaScript to avoid namespace collisions. So I've leveraged a pattern known as an iffy, or immediately executed function expression. The reason for using this pattern is simple. It's to avoid polluting the root namespace in the browser with any functions that you've created in JavaScript. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm giving my function a name and returning this about function to this where's my JS name for my namespace, if you will. So at runtime, if I were to type where's my JS dot about and provide an app name, then I can simply uh, return the app name for my application. And then inside my script here, I have a link, and that link has an href property that is using JavaScript and get entry eSpace name to return the name of the current application that I'm running. Notice also another little side tip inside of extended properties. I've taken this container, my module link, and modified its tag name to be an anchor tag. So that's another little trick in the OutSystems world you can use. So effectively what I have here is a link that will leverage JavaScript to return the name of my application using the function that I defined at the module level. At the screen level, similarly, there is a JavaScript property. So I've selected my hello screen and it has a JavaScript property, which has a very similar iffy defined. So in this case, again, I've leveraged that immediately executed function expression pattern. And instead of returning about, I'm returning a function called hello. So I have effectively a name screen, namespace hello screen, a function hello, which is going to call the JavaScript alert with the name that I pass it. And inside, again, the link that I've set up, 
again using the extended property OS tag name with JavaScript hello screen dot hello and using some jQuery to get the um, value of the text box that I have defined here. So I have name box, name box dot ID. So I'm getting the runtime ID from the name input box and then passing the value from that box into this hello function that I've defined. Last but not least, I've defined a web block, hello block, and if we double click and dive into that, you can see that I've simply used a script expression as part of an expression widget. I've set its escape content to no, so that I actually get the expression the way that I want it, and I have both a script block, which again has the iffy pattern and is returning a function called hello, um, same as we saw before. And my second expression simply has an anchor tag with the href set to JavaScript hello block dot hello. So I'm calling the function that I've defined above. I've got a CSS class on it to style it. I've got some text to display. And then I have an input box with an ID of hello name. And I'm going to use some jQuery to get the value from that box and pass it to that hello function. So pretty straightforward functionality. So that's great, and we saw how it worked at runtime, but what happens when I have to troubleshoot this code? Well, let's take a look at that next. To troubleshoot JavaScript running in a typical web application, we'd usually leverage the browser tools for testing and debugging that script. But to do that, we kind of need to know where that script is going to live. So I'm going to pull up the Chrome DevTools for my application and take a look at a couple of things of importance here. Remember that we have module level JavaScript, which is going to tell us the name of the application we're running. That module level JavaScript will appear in a file called underscore globaljs.js. So you can see this is the exact same immediately executed function expression that we saw in code, um, and it's going to uh, tell me what the app name that I'm running is. Again, the app name is passed in from the link in the screen itself. Similarly, we have screen level JavaScript, which is going to effectively say, hello world or hello person name, right? That screen JavaScript will appear in a named JavaScript file that is named the same as the screen. So in this case, hello.js. And you can see again, the function that I've defined, the namespace for it, etc. Now important to note, so hello screen, that's the name I gave this. If I come in and type hello screen, you can see that I actually have that as an object and I can get statement completion on it. And if I were to say hello, Sam, and flip back to my screen, you can see I have Hello Sam, right? So works fine from the console as well. So we can troubleshoot it by using that. Same goes for our global JS. Um, if we wanted to do about, we can simply do where's my JS dot about and pass it app name. and we can see it gets the value that we passed in. Last but not least, our widget JavaScript is a little bit different. It does not end up in a separate file because of the way that I implemented this. So because these are simply expressions that are uh, written to the screen, if I do a right click and inspect, I can jump in and see the script block is output here. So we can see again the same script that we generated here, and you can see the a tag and the input tag that I created, as well as the JavaScript link that is going to get the value from this box here. So you can see it's pretty straightforward to find and troubleshoot your JavaScript code running inside of an out system application. 
So in this video, you've seen three places that you can add custom JavaScript in your OutSystems web application. You've seen where that JavaScript ends up in at runtime so that you can troubleshoot and debug that code. You've also seen a quick tip on structuring your JavaScript properly to avoid namespace collisions. Thanks for watching. Come back and watch more videos in the future, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel.